Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it super easy to build a professional website for your online presence. Hi everyone, I'm here, better late than never, with another sketchbook session, so get cozy and let's draw together. So I finally got some new art materials, uh, which are for the most part micron pens. And I also pulled out a couple of other things that I used to use in the past, like this red pencil right here. And also just showed you guys my favorite eraser that is very good for precision, but yeah. So I'm super excited to get back into using microns again because I used to use them all the time when I was in high school. And this time I also acquired this big set of markers from my friend Tina, who is also on YouTube and her YouTube channel is I am a wonder in case you guys haven't heard of her, please check out her channel. Her art is amazing. And thank you, Tina, for giving me these markers. I'm super excited to use them. So uh, in this video, I decided to draw my two kind of recent characters called Alma and Astrid. You may have seen them before. They were from the very first page of this new sketchbook. They're kind of new. I mean, I don't remember how, when exactly I created them, probably a year ago when I was working on the script of my comic for the first time. And, or maybe actually that's been like two years now, Jesus. But regardless uh, i have not drawn them drawn them a whole lot so these days since i've been bothering to pick up my sketchbook to draw something spontaneous uh, most of the time i do gravitate towards drawing my characters and i decided to draw these two just to get a better idea of them and to just get some practice in i guess for drawing them later on in the comics because they will be repeatedly um they will show up repeatedly somewhat um not nearly as much as the main characters of course but still i figured it would be good for me to get used to them but yeah uh this was a very spontaneous session in terms of content because i actually had no idea whatsoever what i was going to draw before i sat down and just kind of picked them on the spot and i actually remembered afterwards that i was i did have something lined up in my mind um when i was going through all my or old art i found a couple of things that i wanted to use for a draw this again challenge but i completely forgot about that so i ended up trying this instead but next time hopefully i will do the draw this again challenge but yeah so since i was using no references for this one and it was super spontaneous uh, as you will see, I did tweak the poses quite a bit, mostly for Alma because she was in the foreground and probably also because I did not bother to do any warm-ups before drawing this and unfortunately I haven't drawn for a little while before getting into the sketchbook session so I was quite rusty which is something, you know, I'm not always consciously aware of when i do these things and then later like an hour into the process things suddenly start to get easier and lines flow more smoothly and then i realize that i guess the entire time up to that point it was more of a warm-up situation and it was a little bit difficult and there was some resistance so this is kind of what happened with this drawing but yeah, I tweaked her pose many times, I redrew some limbs, but I was pretty happy with the way her head turned out, so I kind of just kept it as is and was just fixing things around it is uh, what I ended up doing. And so, I am using this red pencil to sketch. Uh, I actually used to use this red pencil all the time, sometimes just for sketching, and I've had this phase where I used it to trace the undersketch for my finished watercolor pieces onto watercolor paper with my um, light box and the reason why I used this red pencil as the sketching tool was because the red um, graphite or whatever the, the um, substance is <laughs> that this pencil consists of um, actually melts away into the ink and watercolor really nicely so it's it's a very good under sketch uh pencil to use but this one in particular is caramine red um and of course it's a color race prismacolor pencil and i have many of those and um will probably continue to use them for under sketching although as you can see it does kind of ghost 
quite a bit after erasing, but I don't think it really matters much in the end since it is just a sketchbook and I don't need like a pristine clean result as I usually do for my finished pieces. So, um, drawing this actually made me really want to start working on my comic and so I just wanted to take a quick moment to tell you guys why I am not working on it at the moment. This makes me kind of sad, but it is what it is and I feel like I've already waited this long um I can't I don't mind waiting just a bit longer before I can really dive into it is I know something I've probably said before but this time my plan is relatively solid um so the reason why I'm not currently working on it is because I just want to really put all my effort and focus into the art book that I'm currently working on first and to complete that content uh and deliver it to the publisher and then um be essentially like my mind won't be so occupied with the art book so that i can just kind of dive into working on the comic and you know honestly the art book content is not even that far off from gloaming veil anyways because it does uh include a lot of gloaming veil illustrations most of the characters that i draw are from my comic and so it kind of works hand in hand as like nice preparation i suppose but i have definitely put a bit of a pause on working on my script for the time being until i complete the art book which by the way uh just so you guys know i will tell you what the progress is looking like on that front and it's great i have gotten a lot of things done in the past couple of weeks and i am nearing the completion i mean at least uh, the deadline is definitely looming and breathing on my neck so um i do feel like i'm in pretty good shape and i will finish everything that i need to but yeah it's in uh, it's shaping up and i'm very excited about it as i mentioned before so i'm just gonna take a quick moment to tell you guys about this video's sponsor Squarespace. One of the things I like a lot about using Squarespace to build my portfolio site is that it's super easy to customize the colors and fonts to match my unique branding, which I think is very important for my online presence. I was able to easily upload my custom logo image and set it to a size and layout I like most, and then tweak the text colors to match. The size editor also allows for a very quick addition of extra pages and I just recently added a gallery of sketches and it only took me a couple of minutes to do so thanks to the automatic image scaling system and easy navigation. If you're looking to build a website for your online art presence or business and want to try out Squarespace, you can head to squarespace.com slash cosmic spectrum art to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code cosmic spectrum art. You can find the link in my description below. And now back to the video. So yeah, as you can see, I am still working on the sketch here. And one of the things that I was going to talk about is that I, while I was doing the sketch, I was really trying to think about the order in which I'm going to use the next art materials that I, um, obviously prepared to use which were the microns and the alcohol markers and i wasn't sure if i should use the markers first or the microns first because my typical process um is just doing the line art first regardless of the situation it's something i do literally in every single medium that i use and even including digital like everything i do involves cleaning up the line work first and then doing whatever else i was going to do to it but I have seen many people online, um, on YouTube specifically, use alcohol markers first to uh, put in a bunch of the shapes with the colors and then go over them with line art afterwards. And it's something I kind of consider doing, but honestly, I figure it's probably not a good idea for me because as you can see, I do sketch kind of messy and especially when I'm rushing which is unfortunately most of the time when it comes to sketching uh my lines get more chaotic and darker so i start to press way harder on the pencil and then they become kind of difficult to erase and i do think in the end i decided not to do the alcohol markers first because 
honestly the line the, the shapes in the, the drawing just weren't coherent enough for me and I probably won't be able to figure out how to make them clean enough to go over with the line art afterwards I honestly there's just something about that process that doesn't even register for me because the weird thing is that you'd think um that line art is kind of a separate thing from shapes so like some people i've seen some people with a digital process for some re uh, for example that uses a lot of shapes first like solid shapes of color and then figures out uh they figure out the line art on top of it afterwards and it's kind of an afterthought but to me i i need the lines to figure out the shapes if that makes any sense i can't work on shapes right off the bat they have to be contained within the line and that's how i am able to visualize them if that makes any sense i don't know it's, it's kind of hard to explain because i don't i I've, you know sometimes i used to think that i'm a line oriented person but you know if i really observe my stuff it is very like i do spend a lot of time figuring out shapes using the lines obviously and you know maybe i'm just talking nonsense because it's difficult to separate those things anyways because it's not like you can just put down a, lot, uh, a bunch of lines and not have them form any shapes so i don't know if i'm making any sense whatsoever but in the end my point is that i figured i will just use my typical process of inking first and just cleaning the whole thing up and finalizing all the shapes uh despite my super messy sketch and then figuring out how to use the markers on top of that which is pretty much what i've always done up until this point anyways and i might as well stick to it is what i figured so yeah um using the microns at last i was very excited for this because honestly microns were my absolute medium of choice when i especially when i was in high school when i used to when i used to draw all the time like some of my most artistically prolific years were those years like when i was 14 15 16 17 maybe um even starting from 13 perhaps uh is when i was just obsessed with inking and i was using these micron pens and so my favorite is the thinnest one available which is 0 0.05 and i really love the amount of details that i can get out of this super thin line but I gotta tell you guys, as soon as I started using it, I instantly realized that it is so different from what I remembered. Because I figured since I used to use them so much, I would just be instantly in my comfort zone when I went back to them. But the truth is, it was extremely uncomfortable to use them for mostly the entirety of the drawing maybe not like near the very end of the inking process but for a long while i was struggling because i realized that i got very very comfortable with pressing super hard on the pen while i was inking uh up until now because i all i've been using were, were metal nibs uh g nibs specifically and it can withstand quite a bit of pressure and in fact i use this pressure to my advantage all the time in order to make thicker lines because that's how the nib works and this the micron pen is completely different it requires a very soft touch and that is something that is at, th at this point very difficult for me because i press very hard and very firmly on the pen and so I had to make multiple adjustments to my grip and to just how I handle the line work in general and it was honestly I was kind of flabbergasted because I wasn't ready for this and then suddenly because I had to go so softly I started to feel like my hands were not as steady as I am used to them being and I was like oh no like is something wrong with my hands um am i becoming more sloppy with age or something but the truth of the matter is that i'm just not used to it and it's fine but honestly it did kind of scare me for a second because when i was you know younger and in high school and stuff man i had no problems being precise with these things and drawing so tiny is uh and yeah like my line work back then was much more precise than what you see here so uh that was a bit of a scary thought it's like suddenly it felt like regression which is something i have to say i have never really experienced before with art but i do think it's just a matter of um 
forgetting the nuances of using a certain medium so i'm, I'm not gonna be super dramatic about this and uh assume that i have some somehow regressed or whatever since i was 15 so <laughs> moving on um yeah i i i had to really adjust my grip and i think eventually it became a little better and thankfully um it did turn out pretty decent i am very happy with how this artwork turned out overall this page um i do have to say though um while i was still in the process of kind of getting used to it i met i managed to mess up alma's face it was totally fine the way it is as you're looking at it right now but for some reason later on i thought that maybe i will like add one little line to her face on the bottom of her jar or whatever and that completely like messed up the shape of her face and it made me just remember all over again how one of the toughest things for me has always been um the shape of the face like the outline of the face because it's insane how much of a difference it makes with the slightest tweak of where the line is or where the curve goes or etc like it's ridiculous how m like meticulously precise you have to be in order to achieve the effect that you're looking for like with the character's face uh facial expression because it, it 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 is crazy how much the face changes with such a small um line difference i suppose but yeah i mean that's kind of neither here nor there and i was also thinking about how almost hair is ridiculous and it's kind of difficult to draw without digital aid and I think it it looks a little bit different from how I intended it to look, but whatever. I mean, it's close enough, so it's fine. It is definitely much easier to draw her hair um, in Photoshop for me, that's for sure. Even though I've already done it once. I've only done it once, so... Anywho. Um, yeah, uh, another thing I wanted to mention about this piece is that I... Like I said, it was a super spontaneous one, and I didn't really plan anything out. So most of the details that you see here, I came up on the spot or I am already kind of aware of because the uniforms that they wear, I already designed previously. And so I know what those look like and I'm pretty intimately familiar with them at this point. But I always like to do something new for accessories. And so I ended up looking up three references for this and specifically they were the uh, headphones that Alma is wearing and the, the two purses or like the purse and the backpack that these two characters have and so the headphones are sennheiser and they are actually the same headphones that i have and i love these headphones dearly because they sound absolutely incredible and um i i just kind of googled them because i'm aware of them i think they look kind of cool so <laughs> i found a pair and they actually have a red version which i figured would look really cute with um alma's rest of her clothes that she's wearing and so i picked those and i also really love to draw things that i really want to own but unfortunately cannot afford which are these alexander mcqueen purse and backpack i think they are so nice and i just really wanted to draw them it also gives me kind of an opportunity to study the design a little bit even though obviously i don't get into crazy details but I do love to find um, the products just on the website and really, really zoom in on all the details to see kind of how it's constructed and um, what kind of details go into them. So yeah, those are the references that I used for this piece. And um, yeah, after I had this big struggle with Alma's face, which um, on the screen I believe is currently ruined and I know ruined is kind of being dramatic about it but what kind of makes the face ruined to me specifically is that it's just not what she's supposed to look like so like this little change suddenly makes her face look too squashed and as a result she doesn't really look like how i picture her so she just looks like a slightly different person and that bothers me to no end so i decided to just finish making this and then go back to her face and fix it with some uh white paint but yeah, I went way more carefully into Astrid's face because I did not want to have to fix her face as well. And I will say that it went over a lot better than Alma's face. But still, I think 
I kind of liked how her facial expression looked before I inked it, which is a little bit of shame, but it really reminded me of the fact that this was literally, this was, and kind of still is, the situation <laughs> that has been haunting me since I started to draw. Um, the fact that something, like especially with a messier sketch, um, sometimes just the accumulation of all the little lines really kind of makes the face, facial expression. And then later on when I go in and try to clean it up and use fewer lines to recapture it, as you see um, is what I'm doing here with this drawing, um, it really does tend to kind of lose a little bit of its essence. But, you know, it is what it is. It still looks close enough to what I, what I intended. And so I, I suppose I'll just have to live with that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so what was it? that I was gonna say about the inking. There's a couple of other things that I had in mind that I wanted to talk about, but yeah. So I guess one of those things was Astrid's hair and me not being sure how to approach it because I was kind of being lazy with the sketch and I didn't really figure out the shapes exactly. And so I did just go in and outlined it, but I had no idea how I was gonna approach it. Like whether I was gonna use a marker to color it in or to just put solid black or to to leave out some highlights and this really kind of reminded me how i am so completely out of practice with using these particular uh this type of medium and i got so used to using diluted ink to uh for essentially most of my art that i have forgotten how i used to handle using black ink and how to kind of utilize the like the opaqueness of it and how to create texture with it all that like i will have to go back and look at how i used to do things and maybe start looking at more manga illustrations again because obviously the mangaka are the masters of using black ink for various purposes it's sad to say that it's something i kind of have forgotten and i think i am in a position now where i my skills have definitely improved since the last time I was using these microns mostly and um, yeah I think I would be very happy to keep exploring them and kind of um, figure out better ways of making use of them I suppose and another thing that I wanted to mention is that I really took a chance on drawing almost uh, sorry Astrid's hand there because the sketch was like invisible I could hardly even see what it was but I was much too lazy to go back to the pencil and sketch her hand out again so i was like whatever you know what i'm just gonna see if i can just wing this hand and <laughs> hopefully it works out and you know i'm happy to say that it did actually work out which is kind of a rare occurrence because from what i've noticed most of the time when i try to do this uh in other situations it does not look good and i have to somehow figure out a way to fix it so this was not so bad uh, considering the fact that the sketch underneath was barely even existing and another another thing that uh came to mind when i was working on the inks is that like specifically the coffee cup and like all the stuff that's towards the edge of the paper is that one of the reasons why i don't have a whole lot of sketchbooks from when i like i do have sketchbooks from when i was younger but at some point i had a long kind of period when i ditched sketchbooks completely and only drew on loose paper and it was specifically because i really hate how there is this big um the surf the surface is not flat is what i was trying to say so the lack of a flat surface when using a sketchbook is kind of what frustrates me because it is very difficult for me to ink um things that are on the very edge of the paper when uh, i'm still like when the sketchbook is relatively fresh and uh, fresh and so there's a big elevation from the desk to the sketchbook and so typically how i combat that is probably super obvious but you know i suppose i can just mention it anyway is i will find a similarly thick book or other notebook or other sketchbook and just kind of um bring it up towards the sketchbook that i'm currently using and bridge the gap with that but the reason why i mentioned this is because I couldn't really do that this time around because I have gotten used to, first of all, I, I'm i trying to fix my posture, which has been absolutely horrible for the majority of my life, and I do get neck pain sometimes and back pain, but um, 
one of the things that I'm trying to kind of fix that with is drawing on a bit of an angle instead of drawing flat on the desk surface. And so I typically prop up the sketchbook with something else, but that actually is what makes the elevation even worse uh, from the desk flat surface. And it makes it difficult to find something to kind of put beside it that I can, you know, um, bridge the gap with. But again, like I said, that's neither here nor there. And also I do have this little easel thing that I can put on my desk that is adjustable and maybe I can use that instead of just putting some random thing like the wrist rest from my keyboard underneath the sketchbook to create this elevation in order to spare my neck some pain but anywho so um yeah once i finished the line work i did have to wait for it to dry for a little bit because i did notice that um, once I started using the markers, I noticed, especially on Astrid's face, is that in the areas where I used a little bit more ink, like the, the inked area was thicker, the marker did kind of pick up and smudge some of the ink. So I I think it's probably because the paper is super smooth. Um, I can see how maybe there just isn't enough uh, surface texture for to catch and retain the ink as as well as other paper does and so um i don't know if actually this is the best type of paper to use for microns but regardless i do love the sketchbook and i'm gonna continue to use it um despite this little hiccup so I, I suppose i'll just have to kind of wait a little bit longer next time for the micron ink to dry properly before i can move on to the markers so yeah, as I, mentioned, as I mentioned in the previous video, I was very excited to go back to using alcohol markers. It has been forever since I've used them. By forever, I mean probably like a few years. And as you can see, my approach is quite chaotic here because I was um, just using this new set that Tina has gifted me and or donated. I'm not sure how to call it, but yeah, very grateful, grateful for that. And um... I was just figuring out which colors to use because upon first glance it looked like the set is huge and it has and I thought that it would have all the colors that I could possibly need but upon closer examination I actually did uh discover that quite a few colors were kind of missing from like the mid-range I noticed that there were a lot of really cute pastel colors and a lot of darker juicier colors that are more uh, vibrant and I suppose what's the word for it like i guess vibrant is is fine but um yeah there weren't a whole lot in the mid-range which i which i thought was kind of interesting it was like a, it's a weird spread but also i could not find the like an accurate color for the uniform red or nor the warm dark uh gray that i used for the uniform so those two colors like were kind of missing so i went with a cooler gray that was kind of close and um just a basic red but typically i use a very specific color for the uniform and i was a little bit bothered that i couldn't find the same one but i mean what did i expect i don't know it's a pretty specific color so that's fine um i do kind of regret not pulling out like not bothering to go find my other markers because i definitely have this very specific uh red that i used to use for the uniform color but that's kind of besides the point so as you can see i am using some prismacolor color race pencils in conjunction with the markers because i prematurely got a little bit frustrated with like not being able to find the right colors that i need so i figured it would be easier to just get uh, some pencils to supplement with the process and that kind of did the job thankfully and yeah, I, I did kind of try both sides of the markers as, oh, I don't know if I mentioned, but these markers are, um, the brand is Artex, Artex, I don't know. Um, and they come, they have two sides. One is which like a, but one of the sides is like you see me use now. I, I don't know if the audio will line up properly, but one is like a soft brush and the other one is a very sturdy, um, I don't know, square shape. I, I should look this up. There's a word for it. Sorry, I really can't remember it right now. But yeah, I typically prefer the softer brush um, side of the marker. And so for the most part, I use that 
for this illustration and I was kind of picking colors on the spot um, as I was filling in one element to the next and I found that I had to switch back and forth between mediums quite a bit so there were some areas that I decided I wanted to be darker like you can see the some parts of the uniform I I figured it would be easier to just use microns for that uh, same with the bag and Astrid's hair and I think that was a pretty good choice because I didn't exactly test all the markers they did come with a very convenient swatch uh, sheet but as I discovered kind of near the end uh, is that the black is really not that black for these markers it's not very dark at all in fact uh, the micron black is much much darker and so I typically want the darkest you know color in any illustration to be pretty much as dark as it gets so I decided that it would be best to just use the microns for uh, some of the details to kind of make everything coherent which i do like how that turned out quite a bit and i did um use a thicker micron pen to outline the characters something i used to do all the time something i honestly picked up from a lot of manga illustrations specifically when i was young or like much younger and i was super obsessed with sailor moon and i meticulously analyzed the techniques that the artist used in the manga and whatnot and um outlining the characters with a thicker um, line was something she did pretty frequently and I absolutely just love how that looks so yeah I brought some of that into this illustration and as I was working on the accessories and all the little details and stuff for the backpack specifically I knew that I wasn't gonna like this backpack is a real backpack as Alexander McQueen and it's gorgeous and so I did not want to ink all the little studs on it or draw or have to like color draw around them so I preemptively planned that I would just color in the whole backpack and then use this white gel pen to just draw in the little studs and that was an excellent decision because sometimes back in the day when I used to use markers and ink pens i would just draw all the details indiscriminately every single one of them and then struggle to kind of work around them when i was past the inking stage so thankfully i have definitely learned since then and some of the things i definitely left out prior like and then brought some of the inking back while i was working on the colors like with the markers so that the process was a little more mixed up than um the typical like strict one thing at a time um process that i tend to utilize for inking and watercolors and um digitally and whatnot so i digress but yeah i managed to come across like i guess come up with a couple of cool effects that i really liked for specifically for using the pen with um almost trousers or pants or whatever you might want to call that and i am very happy with how everything turned out overall so i will say that i want to use alcohol markers again for sure and i will just continue to hopefully improve on my technique because at the end of the day this was a little bit sloppier than what i'm used to but yeah thank you guys so much for watching this i hope you enjoyed it it was something a little bit different i'm glad to switch up the mediums and I am super excited to see you in the next video for which hopefully I will do the draw this again drawing that I mentioned earlier. So see you guys in the next one. Bye!